yes when the patient has come to you with a history of vertigo on pressure changes only then you will do this test how do you do this test that is by seger speculum right by seger speculum you increase and decrease the pressure of the external artery canal in normal years this is not supposed to cause anything so in normal years the fistula test will be negative there will be no vertigo no nystagmus on increase and decrease of pressure but if the test is positive which means that on changes of pressure there is vertigo it indicates a fistula on the medial wall right now i have drawn the medial wall tell me what i am drawing very good promontory oval window round window lateral semicircular canal so if there is a fistula anywhere the fistula test will be positive is that clear so positive in fistula on medial wall fistula on medial wall is it also possible that the patient has a fistula on the medial wall but the fistula test is negative yes either the fistula is covered by cholesteatoma so the pressure is not going inside or the pressure is going inside but the inner ear is not responding because it is dead yes so this fistula you will call as this fistula test which is negative but is false you will call it as false negative fistula it will be seen either in cholesteatoma covering the fistula or in dead labyrinth now was a question of your exam that initially the fistula test was positive in a patient and later on it becomes negative what can you think of if it was positive means fistula was there what happened then yes because of the fistula infection went inside the patient developed labyrinthitis and because of labyrinthitis dead ear and because of which now the test has become negative is that clear yes so remember this now it is also possible that the patient has no fistula on the medial wall still when you are doing this pressure changes patient is having vertigo that is what is known as positive but false false positive fistula also known as hennebert sign this patient does not have a fistula on the medial wall then how his inner ear is getting stimulated yes because because the foot plate is very close there is close proximity between the foot plate and the utricle and saccule so these pressure changes which are not supposed to stimulate the utricle and saccule are stimulating it when will this close proximity happen yes we did this in anatomy also that when the utricle and saccule is dilated and very close to the foot plate as in mean ears or when the foot plate is very hypermobile right so false positive fistula will be seen either in a hypermobile foot plate hypermobile foot plate foot plate or it will be seen in mean ears now there is another condition where this can happen now whenever the bone that covers the superior semicircular canal is gaping that is what we call as superior semicircular canal dehiscence what happens in these conditions is that when the pressure changes goes inside it because of the abnormal opening here it abnormally stimulates the superior semicircular canal leading to vertigo so whenever there is any patient who has on pressure changes vertigo any history of vertigo on pressure changes you will rule out a fistula what else you will think of mean ears superior semicircular canal dehiscence hypermobile foot plate of stapy so all these are the things that you will think of is that clear and that is again asked in your exam so when will you do fistula test patient has come with vertigo and pressure changes okay now have you noticed that whenever there is a very loud bomb explosion suppose very loud sound or there is a gunshot sudden sound you hear what is your response do you do like this oh what loud sound or is your response is a startled response yes startled response why why not just this if it was just a loud sound that was irritating you yes this is because of vestibulo spinal reflex yes loud sounds can stimulate the labyrinth leading to this reflex for maintaining the posture in response to loud sounds right so why this happens is because the oval window on which the foot plate is present whenever in loud sounds it moves a little more 
it stimulates the inner ear not so much that it can lead to vertigo but yes it stimulates it in a that it can lead to a startling reflex how is this mediated from the sacule which gets a little stimulated now starts the nerve can you tell me which nerve yes inferior vestibular nerve you remember the nerve no yes okay it goes to the vestibular nuclei and from the vestibular nuclei through the vestibular spinal pathway it supplies the ipsilateral sternocleidomastoid muscle leading to a this response what is that a relaxation of the sternocleidomastoid muscle right and also from the utricle the impulses go through the superior vestibular nerve to the contralateral eye muscles for the the uh, eye movement in response to loud sounds right that is the vestibular ocular pathway so what is the significance of this this is what is known as vestibular evoke myogenic potential when you give a loud sound you can measure this potential from the sternocleidomastoid this is what is known as vestibular evoked evoke from the vestibule a myogenic a muscle response a muscle potential right so this is a test for vestibular spinal or vestibular colic pathway and you will test this specifically by giving a very loud sound in which people in people in whom loud sounds is leading to vertigo we know loud sounds can startle but they cannot lead to vertigo if they are leading to vertigo it means that the patient has abnormal stimulation of the inner ear with loud sounds indicating that loud sounds is excessively going into the inner ear which means that there is an abnormal communication between the middle ear inner ear which means there is what fistula or there is a close proximity between the oval window and the utricle and saccule as in hypermobile foot plate or in dilatation of utricle and saccule in meniers or also because of excessive loud sound there is abnormal movement of the perilymph because of an abnormal opening in the superior semicircular canal in all these cases the pressure changes were also stimulating the labyrinth leading to vertigo yes in all these cases loud sounds will also stimulate the labyrinth leading to vertigo so these patients who have all these conditions will come always with a complaint of both of pressure changes leading to vertigo hennebert sign and also on loud sounds leading to vertigo okay so in loud sounds leading to vertigo and this loud sounds leading to vertigo is what is known as tullio's phenomena this is known as tullio's phenomena so when patients of tullio's phenomena will come we will test the vamp we will do the vamp test where we will test the cervical vamp and the ocular vamp was a question of your exam cervical vamp is mediated by which nerve so yes it goes from the saccule through inferior vestibular nerve to the same side sternocleidomastoid and the ocular vamp from the utricle through the superior vestibular nerve goes to the contralateral eye what will be the result in normal people the the result will be a normal curve when you give a loud sound there will be some startling response yes so that is a range which is known as a normal so normal the response will be a normal response yes the startling will be present relaxation of sternocleidomastoid will be present but if it is a hyperactive response the amplitude which is normally this much you are getting the amplitude of this potential as this much yes so it is a hyperactive response or maybe if normally this is elicited at around 85 to or maybe 110 decibel sound only when you give such a loud sound this response is elicited in people who have a fistula maybe at 85 decibel only this response will be elicited so that is what is known as a hyperactive response right so hyperactive response if it is present it means that the patient has any of these conditions that i just told you it is also possible that the response will be hypoactive hypoactive means what hyperactive means that the amplitude is less or you are giving a loud sound still the res normal response is not coming so that indicates yes that indicates that the nerve any of these nerves superior inferior vestibular nerve yes which one when you are testing a cervical vamp 
the inferior vestibular nerve that is not functional properly properly that can be a vestibular neuritis right so it can indicate a vestibular neuritis or an acoustic neuroma arising from the inferior vestibular nerve is that clear so okay so quickly tell me in these conditions fistula superior semicircular canal dehiscence mean ears and hypermobile foot plate will there be a positive fistula test yes will there be a hyperactive vamp response yes so now you know that in these patients we will do when they come to us with vertigo we will do fistula test and we will do vamp can you tell me the full form of vamp vestibular evoked myogenic potential right okay so now have you seen this test being done yes we have heard it in neurology also done it in neurology also in medicine opd what is this yes we are doing the rombok test rombok test is a test of what we know that the balance is maintained by three systems by the ocular the vestibular and the proprioception so here what we are doing is we will ask the patient to stand straight close his eyes so we have removed the ocular now the balance will be maintained by vestibular and by the proprioception so if there is any abnormality in the proprioception patient will so sway to both the sides if there is any abnormality of the vestibular system what will happen we know that the function of the vestibular system is to push the body or the eye to the opposite side here we are testing the body balance so the normal side the, if there is hypoactive labyrinth of one side what will happen when you do this test the normal side will push the body to the abnormal side so you will see the patient is going on one side on which side on the abnormal side so in rombok test if there is an abnormality of proprioception proprioception there will be swaying swaying on both the sides right where is a vestibular abnormality will lead to the patient falling to the abnormal side a better way to test exactly only the vestibular system will be to remove the proprioception also yes or no now if the patient is swaying then we know that yes abnormality is there it can be the proprioception or vestibular system so remove the proprioception also that we do by a test which is known as anton burger test which is also known as fukuda stepping test again this will be a test of vestibular spinal or a vestibular colic reflex here what we do is we first ask the patient to stand straight now when the patient has closed the eyes we have excluded the ocular system now we want to remove the proprioception also so now we will ask the patient to do stepping movements very quickly around 90 steps per minute right that will remove the proprioception and then if there is any vestibular abnormality what will happen the normal side will make the patient rotate to the defective side right so here what will happen as as a result is patient is blindfolded 90 times per minute ocular gone proprioception gone in hypoactive labyrinth normal side will make the body deviate to the weaker side so let us now see how we do this in how do we do this antenburger test our sensory input for balance comes from the vision the vestibular system and the proprioception so in him right now all the three are functioning please keep your feet together hands outstretched and close your eyes so we have removed the vision and now his balance is being maintained only by the vestibular and the proprioception so if there is any abnormality in either the two patient will sway to either sides usually in vestibular lesions of one side patient tends to fall on the affected side now if in this patient we can also remove the proprioception then we will be testing only the vestibular system how can we do that is yes, that we can do by the antenburger test also known as fukuda stepping test we will ask the patient to do quick stepping movements of around 50 to 90 per minute so please do quick stepping movements so now his balance is being maintained only by the vestibular system please stop so this you can ask him to do for around a minute if there is any vestibular abnormality of one side 
the patient's body will rotate more than 50 degrees to the affected side. So this Fukuda stepping test or Alterberger test will help us to find out unilateral vestibular dysfunction and it is, as you saw, a very easy office procedure. <laughs>